Hey everyone, I wanted to tell you about an Xcode editor extension that I've been working on called EditKit Pro. It's a collection of different utility functions for all iOS developers. It was recently featured in iOS Dev Weekly, so I figured I should follow it up with a quick tutorial and an explanation of what it does and all of the features that it supports. So let's jump into Xcode and get started. Just want to mention quickly before we look at all of the features, Whichever ones stand out to you, you can assign custom shortcuts for using Xcode's key binding. So you can come here into this menu, filter by edit kit, and then assign whatever shortcut characters you want. So that way it fits your workflow the best. All right, to kick things off, let's look at one of my favorite pieces of functionality. We can see that in this view controller, we have some private variables, some view lifecycle methods, some public functions, some private functions, IV actions, and a data source that we're implementing here. So oftentimes you will want to mark these pieces of code just so that way you can use this view and easily jump to them. But it's always a pain to go in and do it manually. So with Edit Kit, we can just come in and we can click Auto Mark Extensions and it will go ahead and look through the source code, identify the relevant sections, and automatically add these marks for you. Next, let's say that your app has some JSON files in it. Maybe you're using that to uh, create mock responses and stubs in your test or you're using it for configuration purposes But as we can see here, this JSON isn't particularly well formatted So let's go ahead and use edit kit pro to fix that. We'll come down here and we'll click beautify JSON Cool with that done. Let's go ahead and convert this to codable models as well So we'll go ahead and select our newly formatted JSON We'll come convert a JSON to codable and we can see here that we have fully valid codable models all using Swift 5. So you can see that it just sort of adds it in line, but if we take this and we just jump over to um, you know, another view controller, we can see, and just paste it here, we can see that this is all syntactically correct. This is perfectly valid codable models, and every single attribute that we saw is represented here. Now, often during the course of a workday or if I'm working on projects with friends, I find myself sending code snippets, right? Sometimes I'll be including them in Jira tickets or for discussions on GitHub and, and whatever else. And I always felt a little silly going and adding these markdown backticks every single time. So I wanted to integrate that into Edit Kit as well. So now I can make some selection over some code that I'd like to share. I can click on Edit Kit and then copy as markdown. So now it's gonna add that markdown formatting and put this into my clipboard. So if I jump over and I paste it into a markdown editor, we can see that that code formatting comes for free. All right, moving on, this is a small but fun feature as well. So you can go to Edit Kit here and I can click on Create Type Definition. And what this does is it looks at the file name provided in the comment header here to figure out what kind of view controller this intends to be, right? And we can see that this is a table view controller. It could be a table view cell, it could be uh, a collection view cell, it could be any of those standard types. And based off that file name, it can go ahead and create that declaration for you. So it's just one less thing that you have to do during your development workflow. Now, some developers prefer to wrap long pieces of, of code uh, across multiple lines, right? And sometimes they'll prefer to break it at parameter names or wherever they kind of pick for their own coding style. So that's, that is supported here in Edit Kit as well. So I'll just come here and click Format as Multi-Line, and we can see that it sort of rewrites that line in a slightly more readable way. Now, I won't demo this next feature entirely as it's fairly self-explanatory, but as you can see, I've made a selection, and now very quickly, I can easily search for that selection on GitHub, Google, and Stack Overflow, just to make the debugging and investigation process that much simpler. Okay, so we can see here that we have a wide number of import statements that are importing different frameworks, but these lines themselves aren't in sorted order, which makes reading through this just a little bit more difficult. So let's go ahead and see if Edit Kit can fix that. We'll come down to Edit Kit and we'll click on Sort Imports. And we can see that it identifies all the import statements in the source code and sorts them by the name of the framework that you are intending to import. Now, a lot of the other sort functionality is fairly self-explanatory, so I won't go over that at this time, but you can find examples of all of this on the blog post. 
Now, sometimes you'll be limited in what language features or iOS versions you have to support, and Etiquette makes it a little bit more convenient to manage those operations as well. So as you can see, I've selected these two lines, and I'm gonna go ahead and click Wrap in an if def, right? So it's gonna go ahead and, and wrap those statements in this preprocessor macro, which will allow me to specify different branches in the code depending on the, in this case, the Swift version but you could easily switch this out for um, iOS version as well. So in our source code here, we can see that we have these two strings that aren't localized, and ideally we would want them to be. So let's go ahead and manage that with edit kit as well. I'll go and I'll click on the wrap and NS localized string operation, and that will find any of this loose text and it'll automatically wrap it in a call to NS localized string. It leaves the key field empty for you so you can specify the key according to your naming conventions, but you can see here that the text that was previously there is now assigned as a value and becomes a default comment as well. Okay, so now we're in a Swift UI project. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a selection on this outer H stack and come here into Edit Kit and click on Disable Outer View. Right, so it just disabled, or in this case, comments out the outermost container, but it leaves everything inside still active. And I found myself doing these kinds of operations all the time in SwiftUI, so I figured why not just make it a little bit more convenient to do this kind of work. Alternatively, I might want to unnest both of these vStacks. So similar uh, to the previous example, I can just come in here and I can say delete outer view. And you can see it effectively just unnest those two vStacks from the hstack that it was in previously. And keep in mind that you can assign custom shortcuts for all of these functions, so that way you can just integrate it seamlessly into your workflow. All right, let's wrap up with a couple of final variations here. So we can see that the cursor is still on the line that declares the hstack. So I can come in here and I can say disable view, which will just comment that entire block of code fully. Uh, and then alternatively, if I want something a bit more destructive, I can come in and I can say delete view, and it will just delete that H stack or that, that grouping of SwiftUI elements altogether. So I hope you found that video useful and I hope edit kit is at least somewhat intriguing to you. Um, you can go ahead and download it live from the app store now. And if you have any future requests or bug reports, feel free to just leave them in the comments below or email me at argument at digitalbunker.dev. And if you want written instructions on how to actually get it installed and get yourself up and running, you can find that on the blog post, which will be linked below. And there's also instructions for how to set up your own custom shortcuts for your favorite actions here. And also included here are demo videos of each of the functionality that we saw um, in this video. So I'll continue to update this as I add more and more uh, features so this will always be a source of truth you can refer back to. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this. If you have any ideas for future requests, please let me know. All right, hope you have a good day.